Welcome, namaste, Om. In the last video, I called off the search for this one. Now, what does that mean? That means maybe I'm more open and more aware of you guys. You know, enough in self inquiry, you know. Let's inquire on a bigger picture. So it's time to call off the search for you guys. Time to get to the root of what you're looking for. Now, so far in most of these videos, there has been a diverse look at some information, some information that is beyond, some information about this human world, and there's also been some pointings. Hopefully, it has never came across that the speaker has been trying to force you into a position. Because that's not the, 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 the object of life, you know. The object is for you to be here and pursue your life in the way you want to pursue it. But the word want can, can be either a nice want or a really dirty want. But anyway, that's the object. So I'm open, you see. I'm open for any questions or any one-to-one um, -one on YouTube or, or, or this new streamlined thing or whatever. So that may come in the future, depending on whatever you guys want. When I say guys, I mean, you know, it's just my local accent. Every single one of us is here to experience our own self. That is priority, that's primary. Now that doesn't mean to say you have to be enlightened to do that, okay? You're maybe here very open and, and looking for some information, some entertainment, or some sort of um, things that may raise questions in you. Things that may be beyond human belief, that so far some of these worlds may be hold for some of you, or some that can you can relate to your your life as a human. It's not important that everyone follows the path of the saint in a particular path, you see. We're all saints. Let's get that straight from the beginning. We're all starting from the same point and we're all going to end at the same beginning point. The middle journey is very, very personal and very important for you to allow to come and go. We're all here as one single thing, one single self. That's the first thing, right? But you're all here so that you can overcome something, learn something, but not with your, totally with your human mind. Whatever you learn in your human mind is neither good nor bad. It is something that is taking place. It is something that you have been either programmed into or you want to pursue. Even though you, some people know that they're a computer, some people know that they're asleep and they're robotic and they're following the same pattern, they're quite okay with that, you see. I've, in the journey, been this, I, I, this body that speaks awoke on its own. There was no religious path, no spiritual path. It happened to just take place. There was depression, but that's, that's irrelevant. But when it started to kick in, once this ego started to die and disappear and, and I needed to resurface, I had to rely on not doing a satsang, you see, not doing teaching, not doing this. Don't jump into the pot too quick, you see. Don't jump into the pot too quick. Let, the, let consciousness allow you to resurface into this human existence. I found myself with no plan, no skill, watching gurus. You call them gurus, I call them other beings, you know. Um, who, every one of them were completely unique and every one of them 
beyond what you see with the human mind, is pursuing the same thing. Everyone is pursuing the same thing. Every single one. And it's no different between whatever saints you call them, gurus or enlightened beings. They're all pursuing the same thing. But each one is spouting with different tongues. And the human mind wants to choose and disregard. When you're awake, totally awake, you have got no choice because you're being controlled by this consciousness and this consciousness takes you to every single thing that is relevant for you. So every guru, Judith Krishnamurti, Yuji Krishnamurti, Ananda Mayama, David Bohm, Socrates, Lai Tzu, Buddha, Papaji, Muji, Eckhart Tolle, every, Alan Watts, every single one, Robert Adams, yes, I could go through thousands that I really didn't understand before. But now I understand fully. And they're all, although some find them some corrupt or, or, or some sort of in it for some the wrong reasons, they're all experience the same, are, are looking to experience an ultimate death, but not a human body death, a death where they completely finish this total world evolution of different dimensions and worlds and cosmos and galaxies and universes. And then eventually they go and they become what is. Totally. Enlightenment means you experience it. You cannot become it totally. Humans have to be past. You see, your human self has to be past. Everything has to be past. Anyway, enough about that. But I don't want to put myself into the category of a uh, teacher or a uh, pointer or, uh, or an information specialist, a psychologist, a, what do you call these, um, who, Stephen Hawking's, I don't know, the I'm not very good with the, with the terminology of um, identities, names, you know, names and identities are very, very fragile. So, philosopher, a philosopher, yeah. So I don't want to be a philosopher. I don't want to be anything that can be categorized because that's the way that you ego starts coming in and forming this sort of new thing that you become, even though thousands worship, thousands worship you, millions maybe worship you. That's not the, that's not the purpose. You see, the purpose is that we can all at least enjoy this human world, enjoy it for what it is. And if it's through information for some who just went entertainment, then the questions are relevant to you for that. If you want to uh, bury or, or, or delve into my experiences more, then that's fine. I'm willing to speak, you know, I'm willing to talk. But I'm also willing just to be here and answer and point and not be evasive and try and together we can work something out for each one of you. So whatever you suggest or whatever comes in the next future, it will come on its own and it will be okay. Um, but I'm willing to be here for anything that you think can be beneficial towards yourself, you see. Whether it's a, a degree in <laughs> philosophy, you know. Um, so that's it. And I want to give you something, a question that's been raised since the last video. Two questions. Very quickly answer these two questions. One was, I, I, I sometimes speak about the pure mind. But in some occasions, very recently, I speak about a universal mind. And this universal mind seems to be like on a level, a status level. Same as pure mind. Pure mind has to be at the top, you see. Ego mind seems somewhere on the bottom. Well, there is only one mind. There is only one mind. See? The minute identities, names, individualism create separation, which is stemmed from a, a quality of this 
pure mind, the minute names and identities appear, there is separation. Yeah? There's separation between the hand and the face now, you see? Before that, there was no names. So everything was whole. There was no individualism. Okay? Now, I know that's not very interesting as a human, and your mind cannot cope with that. Your mind is always, always in the prowl for new things and new names, and that's fine. When your human mind, see, already categorizing, when all minds merge into this whole mind, which is what you were born with as a baby, you were born with this, wow, I don't know anything. You know? I don't even know these words that I'm speaking, says a child. I don't even know what the mouth is for, nothing. But everything is awesome. Everything is wow. Okay? The minute no mind is, is appears in the present moment, that's what it is. You see, that's what you experience with this, without the wow. You know? Your inside is alive. It is totally alive. So, names, identities, individual things, are what these speak, these teachers, and maybe this one also, says about losing the mind. Okay? Being separate from the mind. Being separate from the mind means being separate from thoughts, names. Thoughts are simply things that come in that exist already. When a thought comes in, you understand the words. Yes? You understand each word because you've been educated at school or whatever. You understand each word. But each, each word has been born before the thought was born. So the thought is just totally always projecting it back thought. thought. And you understand every thought. The minute you understand every thought, Another thought comes to try and, and analyze it, or get rid of it, or search it. Where is the thought coming from? Where is the thought going? It's a thought that has to find where the thought is coming from or going, right? So, identities and names and thoughts are removed simply to experience the space Yeah? We experience it in deep sleep, but it's of no use in deep sleep because the eyes are not working, the nose is not working, the ears are not working. They're all asleep, you see. So enlightenment, basically, our awakening is to experience it with your senses. But when your senses bring a thought in and say, wow, oh, sunset, <laughs> it dies again, you see. It dies. So the mind is only one mind. The minute we, we, we name, we identity, we categorize, we have a universal mind and a human mind. When we invent names and identities, we will fluctuate between all these minds. So therefore, we're not getting a total experience every moment of our day. But is that what you want, you see? It's impossible. Let me tell you that right now. It is impossible for even a saint an enlightened being. Ananda Ma used to go into the Samadhi state because when she was not in the Samadhi state, she was experiencing minds like you do. Not maybe as strong, as vibrant, as and as powerful and as sucking, but mind. And that is the whole problem with humanity, is identities and names and words. Now, how can we overcome all that, you see? As a world, as each one relevant in the same earth, it is not, absolutely not possible to overcome, to eradicate words, identities and whatever. That's why only a few enlighten, because they're only interested in themselves. They're only interested in experiencing there's no mind. When you have experienced it, seven years later, you go, my God, 
Nothing's changed. The world is still the same as it is before. There's still fighting. There's still anger. But you are now, you're not participating with that, you see, because you know it's just a hoax. It's simply something that you cannot fix. Therefore, after enlightenment, it is absolutely important that you try and fit into the world and not sit and samadhi state for the rest of your life like Buddha. Because you will not really see the benefit of every human being is trying, not in a trying way, but is very, very empathetic and compassionate and kind. But they can't overcome it. They are trying to fix the world, you see. The world is unfixable. Your world is totally fixable. So you come back into this enlightened state and you go, wow, what can I do to help people? And you realize from inside, no way, no way. So what many enlightened beings do is they set up ash ashrams, satsang halls to try and get one or two. And one or two is better than none, you see. So don't ridicule these saints and gurus that sit in ashrams, whether they're making money or whether they're not making money. They are doing it to try and get one or two. They are realistic, you see. They are realistic. Only the one that can do it is the one that can do it for themselves. This body, this person, whatever name you want to give me, I accept every name because every name is the same. It doesn't really matter to this one. Whatever name you give me is a, what I benefited from, what this one benefits from is I didn't plan this, you see. I know you can do it on your own. You don't need this one. If, you're, if you want to experience the world as it should be experienced. But it's okay to experience it like every other normal. Normal, as in sleep, half asleep, many asleep, nearly awake stage. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're not suffering. And suffering is not pain. Suffering is the mind suffocating. But suffering is a clue from the mind to say, you better watch yourself, you know. You really better watch yourself. You could go this down this suicidal way if you don't watch yourself. Okay, so you've got the option then to say in a stress, dep depression, anxiety state to say, I, I remember that guy, Graham, Popsy, illness, whatever. Even though I'm in total agony and total pain, I wonder if I should self inquire. And mind will support you. It won't feel like it, but mind will support you. Mind will support you if you're adamant that you don't want to go on like this and you don't want to do anything to your body or anything to any other body or anything to harm any single piece of life in this world. Mind will be there. Absolutely. Another point I want to address is from another um, being who's asked about Ramanas um, used to say don't um, don't get bitten by wrongfulness wrongfulness if you see wrongfulness as real you're going to follow down a path of trying to be right okay now, it sounds to the human mind, that's not right, you see. You know, we can't really, really allow people to be wrong in this world. But Ramana is not saying do anything. Ramana is not saying do anything. Ramana is saying neither, there is neither right nor there is wrong. The minute you give attention to wrongfulness, 
the minute it becomes alive. So the minute you have a negative thought, that negative thought lives. It lives within you and it lives within the whole universe. Now, how many negative thoughts are happening right this moment now? Billions, one after the other, constantly. Brexit, this woman, she can't do this. This prime, this, this opposite, opposing leader can't do this. This woman that's on TV about, you know, being in Syria, they, what's going on with that? You see, that's all wrong. This is all, all suffering towards yourself. Romana is not saying wrongfulness, like crimes are to be accepted. That's not what he's saying. You have to overcome the identity. Wrongfulness has now become a singular thing. It has become a singular thing. It's a name. That's how hard it is to do it in a step by step. How can you overcome every word? So the first, the only word you have to overcome to eradicate all of these words is I, me, whatever you call yourself, whatever you feel yourself solid, independent, I stand guard over my rights. That's the only thing to overcome. This overcoming is believing that you are this I and me, and if you are not this I or me, you don't exist as a person, therefore mind does not exist anywhere, because you are before mind. And everyone knows that. Everyone knows that they're before mind. My mind says, to speaking, my mind, I own it. When you say my car, you're here and the car's over there. There's two. My mind. You own the mind. You see? You don't really own it, but it's, it's, a, it's a statement. There is two. The minute the person, the I, the me, is seen through and overcome, every word is extinguished. Every word is obliterated. They still exist. I'm using them. But there are no attachment, no desires, no preferences. You don't sit down and have an auto cue and make things up and do it this way because that's the way they'll like it. You see, like politicians, oh, we can't put it in that order. We have to put it in this order. That is boring, you see. That is really stale, repetitive, um, organized, <sighs> dead ways. These ways are now dead. Politicians are losing grip because they are not following this, the, the purpose of being here, to learn. Politicians think they know everything. Religious and scientists, they're trying to establish, they're still trying to learn. What's wrong with that, you see? What's wrong with being a person learning? But when you realize, when you stand up straight and say, look, I've learned enough. I know everything. We'll tell you how to run your life. <sighs> they're suffering, you see. So Ramana's ways was exactly the same way as I'm speaking about mine. Whatever comes, you're not denying that the thing exists. You're denying that it is different from anything else. You're denying that wrongfulness is different from rightfulness. Because both are the same. Pain and pleasure are the same. Yuji Krishnamurti says, when the body is in a sexual orgasm, it's in pain. The mind is experiencing pleasure. The mind's going, wow, that's great. The body is experiencing pain. When you're in pain, the mind is experiencing pain. The body is experiencing pleasure. But both pleasure and pain are the same to the body, you see. It's simply an experience, an energetic movement, and the body does not differentiate between pain and pleasure. The mind differentiates between pain and pleasure. Every time I'm going to pull you back to the same thing. Every single thing is exactly the same. It's derived from the same birth, the same thought. I am here. And from all these subsequent things, I've been born. But what the humans have done wrong is they've given birth to names like society, isms, communism, sectarianism, economics, you know, empires, Poverty, 
all these names that, that try and sum up the negatives and the positives, but it's of no use. Bourgeois is the same as poverty, but to your human mind, it's no, because it's going to come take you back to the dictionary and what you were learned at school. And that's OK. You see, I'm not going to go down that route again. So first video and a more open way of speaking, a more opportunity way for you guys to to come and um, and ridicule, please, please ridicule. You know, I'm not here <laughs> to be praised and worshipped. I'm here to be a mirror, a reflective mirror for you. If you feel angry, you be angry. I'm not going to be offended by that. You know, I'm not going to be offended by your love, your wishes, nothing. Everything is the same. You know, but I'm human, so. Be gentle. <laughs> don't throw, <laughs> don't throw grenades at me or whatever. Um, it may not work this, but at least you know, one enlightened being, a one being that experienced enlightenment. You see, that's the better way to put it. I'm not enlightened. You know, enlightenment came and gorged me up, and then let me go again. Let me go to do some good in the world to to help some people. One is enough. As the the great gurus and saints and ashrams and satsangs say, but I, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind. Whatever, whatever you want to get from it, you get from it. So, um, I'll be seeing you. Um, you can comment below or you can um, email through. Um, I think the email is on the 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 YouTube home, whatever you call these things, um, account, I don't know, um, and if you want to um, offer an appearance and, and speak on behalf, or, or that's all very valid. I'm not very, I must warn you right now, it's getting on now, but I'm not very good at IT. And where I live in the rural country of Scotland is the internet is not very strong, so um, I'm going to have to plan something more, maybe from the city to, to, to maybe and change from my usual seat, you know. But um, no airs and graces, no flowers, no, no rubbing sage or whatever, you know. Let's just be friends. Yeah, that's where we can start. Let's be friends. Okay, namaste.